Hello, my name is Angela Siebley, and I'm the co-founder of Personify Leadership. Today I want to talk with you about the spine of a leader, the courage to do the tough stuff in the face of discomfort and pain. I'll start by sharing a story of Anna, a deeply thoughtful leader who unfortunately let her fear of discomfort get in the way of her ability to do the tough stuff. Anna is the kind of person we all want to work with. She's considerate, compassionate, and approachable. In an industry where attracting and retaining talent is nearly impossible, Anna has been extraordinarily successful at keeping her people happy. When I first met Anna, I was visiting her location to facilitate some feedback from her people in the field. Up until that point, everywhere I had gone, I heard nothing but gripes from overworked and underplayed employees who pointed the finger at leadership, of course, especially the disconnected corporate office. But Anna's team offered a very different perspective. Their unique account of their experiences was uplifting. One of the team members who worked at all hours of the night to dispatch calls from employees in the field, one of the least preferred jobs in the company, said, even if the competition paid me double, I wouldn't leave this company. Anna treats us like family. Anna did in fact strike me as a matriarch. She protectively hovered and provided for her flock. As a matter of fact, my visit fell on a Friday morning and her tradition was to bring in homemade klatchis. All of her team members were sitting around the break room digging in, eating, and talking, and I used this as an opportunity to informally learn more about her leadership. I heard nothing but praise for Anna's kindness and generosity. After such an unusual visit, I couldn't wait to get back to the office to report back to the divisional president. I was so excited to share this success story and miss the myriad of dysfunctional stories I had cataloged from previous site visits. When I had shared my testimonial of Anna's great leadership, the president just shook his head in disappointment. He pulled up an Excel spreadsheet and began walking me through Anna's key performance indicators and other financial data compared to her peers in like positions around the country. On average, Anna paid her employees 25% more than other teams, even though the cost of living in her region was significantly less expensive. She had three times more resources allocated to teams' workload than her counterparts, and yet her branch was underperforming in every metric the company measured. The president said, Anna's people are happy and they don't leave because she babies them and she lets them get away with not working. She doesn't do the hard stuff and she's failing. He went on to say that if she really cared about her people, she'd make some tough decisions because as it stood, her branch was in jeopardy of being eliminated. Six months later, Anna and her office of 60 employees were let go and her office was closed. In the workplace, across the world, a business's success ultimately hinges on two things, the ability to increase revenue and to drive down costs. Even when the business is a nonprofit with the mission to save lives without donations coming in and costs being managed, the mission cannot be achieved. Shareholders want to see progress, customers want innovations, end users want enhancements, and patients want cures. None of these lofty goals will manifest themselves. They require risk, overcoming obstacles, facing fears and challenges, really pushing the status quo. They require leaders with a spine. The spine of a leader is about being courageous in tough times. So what exactly does it mean to be courageous in tough times? Well, first of all, courage is about what moves us to action in the face of tough times. Tough times are situations or people we encounter that create some level of discomfort or pain. Think back to the last time you were in the hospital when the doctor asked you to assess your pain on a scale of one to 10. Two was little pain, six moderate pain, 10 the worst pain you've ever felt. Courage is required when a situation we're faced with requires us to move out of our comfort zone, causing some level of discomfort or pain on that scale of one to 10. In leadership, we're responsible for the collective good we represent. When we don't address an, a problem, we create a dynamic that touches all parts of the system. It's like a pebble that ripples throughout the water. We do not act alone ever. Every eye is on us, every ear is listening, every heart is open with the goal to observe how we will lead when faced with tough times. And even though our tolerance for pain might differ, what seems like a routine act for one feels like walking over hot coals for another. We are all held to the same standard. We want our leaders to be courageous. Here's the good news. Although courage is not easy, it is accessible to everyone. Here's the not so good news. The way to embrace courage is to embrace pain. It's not that courageous leaders derive pleasure from pain, but that they're willing to accept pain as part of the process. 
To get you started down the path of embracing pain as part of the process, consider these questions. What is your pain threshold when faced with tough situations or people? What situations or people are most uncomfortable for you? And what is it about these situations that make you uncomfortable or cause pain? Finally, most importantly, what can you do differently next time you're faced with a tough situation so that you can be more effective, you can be more courageous? Remember, courage is accessible to everyone. We just have to be willing to feel the pain and do the right thing anyway.